real legend, this man. It's Scotty McClue. He joins me now from Scotland. Hi, Scotty. Hi, Tom. Dinky do. Fantastic to be on this program. Oh, it's fantastic to have you on, Scotty. I understand that you, along with the rest of the Scottish hordes, want independence. Is that right? Well, yes, as you know, I'm not actually a political animal, but I want what's best for everybody all round, and what in particular is best for Scotland. And this, John, is actually all about economics and control over running Scotland PLC. Forget all the bleeding hearts, forget 1314 and Bannock Bun, that does not feed the children. And of course, we're very worried at the moment in Scotland about feeding the children. We've got food banks in Scotland. We've got children who are starving. We've got people, because of the benefit cuts coming from Ian Duncan Smith's policies, cannot actually feed themselves or their children. Now that, in the year 2014, is appalling. And how will that change if you have independence then? Because you're not going to have as much money. We won't be subsidising you anymore. Well, I think the thing is, actually, we've been subsidising the whole of the UK. I don't see it as you and I or them and us. There is only just us. And Scotland's been subsidising the UK to the tune of 40 billion quid per annum uh, for the last goodness knows how long. So, I mean, I think that's why they're so anxious about Scotland leaving the Union. No, top economists say that's absolute poppycock. Uh, The Barnet formula is actually what we're paying to subsidise subsidise you. No, I think the Barnett formula wasn't made up by Scots for Scots. I think that's the problem. And the responsibility for the current situation doesn't lie at the door of Alex Salmond or the Scottish Government. It lies fairly squarely at the door of Westminster. What do you make of the uh, Three Stooges coming up to talk to you Scottish people today? Mr Miliband, Mr Clegg and Mr Cameron. That shows they're concerned about your your problems and your concerns, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> God bless you, but I mean, if they were actually concerned, why have they left it to the very last week when they realised that this is serious? I mean, Mr Cameron was actually saying, no, 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 that's for the Scottish people to decide. That's nothing to do with us. So you, think you know, and they've left it far too late. I mean, coming out won't make any difference. They're responsible for this. This goes away back, John. This is historic. And when I say historic, the problem with politicians, they so very rarely read their history books. Why is it historic? Well, it's historic. I mean... If you look at 1919, you've heard about the Red Riots in George Square, where they had to lock up the Scottish regiments rather than ask them to police their own people, because they were fairly sure they would just join them and there would be a revolution in Scotland. And that was when your Labour movement really took off with James Maxton, who's a great hero of Gordon Brown's. And uh, Gordon Brown, in fact, has written a book on James Maxton and Jimmy Maxton. And all these famous names in the Scottish Labour movement that ended up with Ramsay MacDonald bringing the, 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 the first Scottish, uh, the first Labour government to the UK. So Scotland's going to become a uh, socialist utopia, is it, Scotty? I, well, I don't necessarily think so. I mean, for instance, uh, at the end of the Second World War, Churchill, uh, uh, according to all his PR and all the sort of surface evidence, had done so much for his country that, uh, you know, he'd become a hero. And what did the nation do? They flung him out. And um, you don't know how long Alex Salmond's actually got once power is, is seceded to Scotland. Do you actually think then it will be a yes vote, overwhelmingly? <sighs> I think it may well be, John. You see, the, the, one of the main problems here is the Better Together, or as they call them up here, the Better Together campaign has fallen apart. So they would actually have been uh, better apart, to be quite honest. <laughs> and what they've been doing is uh, putting out misinformation and disinformation from the start. You see, there is effectively no Scottish media now, John. So FUBARs will have a big foothold in Scotland how do you, very soon. How do you mean there's no Scottish media? Well, we've We've got 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 stuff that's... Do you you remember remember when you had the Austin Mini and the Morris Mini, John? Yeah, go on. 
and, uh, they were known as badge engineering. It became British Leyland. Well, what we've got here, most of the media up here is really just badge engineering of UK media uh, run by a lot of people who are not resident in the country very often. They're, they're non-doms. And um, Scotland has seceded all its radio and what have you to other companies who are UK companies. So we used to have things like the Glasgow Citizen and uh, the Daily Record was all Scottish owned before it became part Absolutely. of the mirror yeah. um, all that sort of thing uh, Scottish television of course well it's still independent um, uh, but uh, ITV has changed the BBC in Scotland there is BBC Scotland but of course it has its lords and masters down at Broadcasting House so you don't even think you get a fair showing in the media in terms of the Scottish I don't think Scottish so John. no I don't think there has been a fair showing and I think it's incredible if this is a yes vote and I'm going purely on economics. Now, I won't go into detail, John, but I've been told at a very, very, very high level that everything economically is dinky do <laughs> and is all by negotiation. Well, so all the scaremongering, well, I mean, so, we've so had you, you uh, think, the, the think, governor of the Bank you, of England on, up, you know. It's not scaremongering. You're not going to be able to have a currency union. You might be able to use the pound, but it's not going to be a union because the English well, now are not going to allow you to do it. And although you're going to try and blackmail us and hold a gun to our head and say, OK, we won't pay the debt, what if we just stand up to that and say, OK, don't pay the debt, go and see if you can get anybody else to uh, back you now then or loan you the money that you'll need to pay for everything that you want in your so socialist utopia, Scotty. I'm amazed well, that you want to live in such a socialist country. Well, you're causing socialist utopia, actually, John, but that's using socialism as a political term. If we use terms like democracy and equality, then it changes the, it changes the game a bit. You don't think you live in a democracy at the moment? You're part of the United Kingdom, one of the greatest democracies in the world, Scotty. Yeah, but do you not think that an awful lot of uh, the decisions for the United Kingdom are made in Europe? Well, of course they are, but then you want to be part of Europe. Salmon actually wants to be part of the European Union. He hasn't got a chance in hell because there's no way 27 states are going to vote for it. But you want to leave this union to join a bigger union. You must need your well, hands. Well, I think, I think, I think I that's the think only... You do. I think you're absolutely lunatic. No, not at all. I think the only danger has to be we have to be very careful in our negotiations that uh, that Europe, if we if we became part of Europe, doesn't then actually uh, you know try and mug us for a few quid, the same as they've done with the UK at a rate of about fifty million quid a day. What do you think about Her Majesty the Queen? I mean, can she be the Queen of Scots as well as the Queen of uh, the United States? Well, Kingdom? she already is the Queen of Scots, so, I mean, nothing actually is to change. They might want to make her Queen Elizabeth the first, but they were very, very concerned when uh, the coronation happened. There was also a coronation. Um, the, well, it wasn't a coronation. It was a service in St Giles Cathedral in Scotland, and there was a concern at that time that the nationalists may want to push for a Scottish coronation, but the Queen is fairly and squarely the monarch. There is no connection between the union of the parliaments and the union of the crowns. So okay. I can quite understand why uh, the Queen would not want to have to be part of all this argy-bargy. Um, it really doesn't concern her. So she'll still be able to go to Balmoral, will she? Oh, of course, absolutely. There's no problem. I mean, Balmoral, for instance, belongs to the Queen. Do you think now? What did you think about Miliband's idea? He was going to put guards on the border <laughs> if Scotland gets independence. What do you think? Yeah, well, that? I mean, that's that's him. That's him. Obviously, just talking a little bit of nonsense, trying to make light of a very serious situation that's going to be decided in a week's term. So, I mean, as you know, for 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 people coming up with locks for stable doors long after the horse has bolted, um, I just don't see the wisdom in that at all. But you see, the, the problem is the people that are coming up, Mr. Cameron, Mr. Clegg, uh, Mr. Miliband, they're not trusted by the uh, by the UK electorate. So you think there's that, that's the fundamental problem? There's a yes. massive disaffection between the Scottish voters or the Scottish population and Westminster. But that's mirrored in the rest of the UK. I can live in Coventry. John, John, yeah, as absolutely. You know, I think they all live in gilded balloon as well, my friend. But it doesn't you mean know, I, th I think, to be honest with you, you could probably have extended uh, the Hadrian's Wall concept right down the south <laughs> uh, into Yorkshire and the Midlands. <laughs> And, and uh, what will you miss if you're not part of the union, Scotty? 
Well, I mean, I I was actually a very staunch unionist up until the 1st of May 1997 when Mr Blair took power and I realised that that was not only the end of the Labour movement, that was actually the end of the UK. Oh, so you, Blair started it, didn't he? Yes. OK. Yes, by, 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 by you know, doing things, saying, I'm... I'm